Well, now it's time to start on a new painting, uh, the second in our series of these three wildlife ones. We've just finished the herons, and we're going to do this barnacle goose and some waders. And there's lovely sunrise over a beach, um, this time in oils. So I get to work directly into doing the background first, again, leaving the bird parts out until the end, working my way gradually up from the mid-tones to the darks and the lights again, in the same sort of way, this time with more opaque paint, slightly heavier paint, and of course more vibrant paint with the oils, I feel. Here are the colours that I keep available in oil paints. I use mainly students quality. You can't get away with this in watercolour, but you can with acrylics and oil paints, I feel. As you see, there's a great variety for almost every use, whether it be landscape, portrait or sea. Of course, I don't use all of these all the time. Let's take a close look at the individual colours. Perhaps I'm a little lazy in that I could mix my greens, but I'd like to keep just a basic set of all of the warm and cool colours. A certain set of greens and a certain set of reds and so on. Here we have my warm colours and the reds. Let me take a look at some of the intermediates, the purples and the reds, then the greens that I keep, and then through to the yellows. And of course, many of these colours can't be mixed as their primary colours, such as the blues. So it's very worthwhile having these different colours to hand. For instance, if I need various blues, I will keep cerulean blue, and I'll keep uh, cobalt blue and ultramarine blue and Prussian blue. All of those blues I think are very necessary, even some turquoise as well. This is my basic brush set. For this particular painting I won't need many, just a couple of filberts and a couple of fine rounds at the end. Anyway, here's the pictures we're going to use and the composites for it. Again, it's a composite I put together on my uh, computer using pictures that I've taken myself. Again, everything is taken by myself and I like to use my own uh, studies as much as possible. Obviously at times there aren't, just occasionally there aren't, but as much as possible. I'd rather paint from life, but it's almost impossible to do this from life unless you were doing pencil studies and working from art studies first of all. For me the photography is, is much easier and uh, I can use it for more varied purposes as well. So let's have a go then at painting this off. Well, that's good, I forgot to put the camera on to do this so far, it doesn't really matter. What I've done is put some chrome yellow, some yellow ochre on to make a start and then I've used some cerulean blue, about sienna and then some ultramarine blue and about sienna to start making blue greys. Using uh, brown and blue to make a grey allows us to go from warmer or cooler and of course the different blue and the different brown will give a different grey as well so it's a simple way of making a variety of greys certainly not black and white <laughs> so I'm going to build up this underpainting first in the oils and then work my way over right, let's continue painting this work now at the moment we're just blocking in these base colours blocking and blending using the various greys I've just been mentioning and I want to work up these colours here I'm going to start with the lighter colours so I'm going to have a slight tint of rose going on here, a little touch of chrome into that. So a white chrome and a little touch of rose all the way around as well. And that lovely colour's coming up into the background here as well, so I'll put that a little bit stronger. Blend that in with that grey coming across there still want to work a little bit like watercolour if we can, although we can put lights over darks as I was with oils, um, it is safer to work with your, your lights first and work through to the darks, so medium tones and lights first then work back to the darks. And let's look at this lovely golden colour that's going on here, slight orange in it, we'll, we'll bring more orange into this later, let's just go around these birds, we're going to leave these little birds where they are in position. Just, just to mark out, just to delineate, if you like, where they are. So I just want to, at the moment, I just want to lose this white canvas. Get some colour on. This will just lose the mucky surface of the drawing. You do find that the oil paint, actually, it takes in the pencil and um, fixes it. So that uh, it disappears. Um, and here we are on Christmas Day doing what comes most naturally to me, painting. Enjoying myself still. Christmas Day 2014. Enjoying sharing with you the things that I like to do, which is paint. Now we've got to work our way down. And we've got these lighter colours down here as well. So I'm going to take a bit of that chrome, a little bit of cadmium orange this time, just a wee touch. These paints have been on here a while. Um, but down here we've got lighter colours shining, so I'm going to put a cadmium orange and 
cadmium yellow and white down here just to feel these and a touch of the a touch of the rose not too much just to lighten things up down there right through here and I'll peek into that now I've got this color on my brush and while I've got it on my brush I'm going to start using it up in the sky because I mean the water is actually reflecting the sky so this is where it's meant to be coming from and we'll start just feeling the fluffiness of those clouds the paints even over a night the paints had a little bit of time to dry off a bit to make that a lot lighter here we'll use some pure some white um, across here just to, a mucky white just to blend in slightly the white just to come through there and little bits of cloud. We're going to build this up, go backwards and forwards, bit by bit by bit. Just start to paint on some of these thicker. It's what we're doing is fat on lean, so we put the thinner paint on, which is the leaner paint. And now we're coming back to work up these heavier, fatter layers on top of that. I'll give a bit of texture with them as well, because we can actually build the waves up with this. And we'll build up purer colours into there. So have great fun. Doesn't get too carried away yet because <laughs> I enjoy painting so much, especially this sort of thing. Um, I really can get going. Much more pure white on there. We'll put some darker colours down there. I right, leave that. Let's come back down here because we need to really do need to get some of this covered. Having said that, I just can't resist going back up here and doing a bit more because I'm enjoying it so much. Now let's come down to those greys again. We've got all these greys to do here. Put a little bit of the pink in it, but let's go back to the grey. So we're going to use some um, cobalt blue and a bit of the burnt sienna again. Let's see what we get with that. Get rather a green with that. I want more red into it, so a bit more brown into it. There we go. And it does need some more of that rose in it. There we are. Nice deep shades. Tempted to use some woodcocks like this in my snow one that I'm going to do because we've got in this series I've got um, another one to do yet of swans looking through some green early summer woodland um, and you've seen the heron one already um, but I'd like to do a snow one and I'll do a whole series I may well put a calendar together of these different um, where are those birds? there be a bird there so ultramarine a little touch of rose Touch of burnt sienna, white, gives us our nice mid warm blues and greys. Start to get the feel of these ripples a bit more now. Should have done that there. Now, when I've got a darker colour made here, again using my ultramarine and a bit of rose and so on, um, I want to just take that dark colour. We'll put this very dark uh, breakwater in here. So a little bit more about Sienna this time into this, which uh, is giving me my slightly warmer dark. Those little bits of stone come through. I'll paint these in more detail later, but let's just now a little bit of Prussian blue. Not make it darker still and bluer still. Let's see for this edge here. And I've got to just try and paint in another beam just coming through here. I need to make that sea a bit lighter on top, I think, a bit higher up. Because it does come through there a bit more. Right. A bit more brown into that. Again, we're going to make these much darker colours later on. We're not too worried at the minute. It's just uh, establishing things at the moment. More blue into that. There we go. And we'll come back to these greys, blue greys. Get these in nice colour. So that's cobalt and the rose with a little bit of ultramarine just to bring it back a fraction. 
our basics covered there. Now let's put the colours a bit more colour in for the bird. We want to have a much lighter pink, grey pink there. Around the back of the bird there. Before we paint the darks in, darker down this bit. We to put some more of these lovely pink golden creams into here as it goes on though later on. Just, just to get me started. Which I have a lot more work to do on this yet. This is, this is time to get these tones established, that's all. Right, back to the darks. Make our dark again using some Prussian blue and bouncy on it. Go back onto this bird. Maybe a bit more blue into it. That's better. Just a bit too brown then. I found this barnacle goose. We'll tidy that up later, but I just I say, I want to establish this, this thing at the moment is just where things are. And we can start to feel yeah. these feathers coming around the back here. So we can get the effect of these feathers just by dragging the paint through. We get the basics of our, our barnacle goose and then we'll, we'll work into that. Get that established. We've almost lost all our all white that we don't need, we don't want. We'll start to add some of these bits of dark coming through here. I think there's more pure later. I want to put all the lights in before I do the darks at the end. Right, and we come back to now adding on the lighter colours. I'm going to let that dry just slightly before I start on that. Right, here we are, Boxing Day. And a little bit more on this painting before we start trenching ourselves and filling ourselves up more with food. Right. And uh, back to the filberts, and we've got a basic coat on here, it's still tacky, so it's quite a thin coat because we're painting the fat over the lean. What I've got to start to do now is start to really make these colours work in the sky. So I'll get my brush going first, and let's look at the very, very light, light blues in there, turquoises and blues. We've got a very slight, let's break the paint on this, hasn't been used for a while. Got a very slight uh, turquoise going on over there, light turquoise. So a little bit of white. I usually use titanium white rather than lead white. And that turquoise is coming in just above clouds here into this. It's got a slight pinkiness to it, so we'll, we'll add a little touch of rose to that. That's a lovely colour. Look, that's the one we want to get this beautiful glow going. As the sun just starts to come up, these nice romantic times. Don't want to be slushy with it, but I think I, don't, I think it really matters what the subject is, providing we don't overdo the chocolate box uh, attitude and make it too too slushy. Now, as it comes across here. It gets more yellow, so I'm going to take a little touch of the lemon yellow and the white again. A wee touch of turps just to get it going. And we'll make this gradually blend in here. That light blue is coming in the clouds up into here as well. Lick it in. It gets a little bit, a wee touch of it down here. Blend it in my finger. That's the beauty of the oils again is that, that we can blend things later with them. A little bit greener down here as it comes through, even through to this slightly bluer layers here. And blend them in. A bit more of the Magenta into it. Lovely magenta grey clouds coming. I'm going to 
keep working this up and working this up, or I'm going to keep working this up and working this up until I, I'm happy with it. Right up and through into here. See how these different greys are just beginning now to make more sense. Now I want to go back to some cerulean. I must have to get some of these slightly stronger blues going on back up into here. Showing between the clouds. The sky just showing through these light areas. A little bit stronger now, I'm going to go down to a cobalt blue. Here, and a bit of stronger cobalt blue into this up here. Which will make the other blues seem lighter because we're playing one against the other. It's like the warm against the cool, the light against the dark, rough against the smooth. We can play these different colours. One against another, a little bit of the deeper blue up here now as well. Now, check that ultramarine now. A little bit of burnt sienna to it. This is ultramarine and burnt sienna. And a wee bit of the magenta again. Or the rose will do. And let's look back at these deeper blue, these warmer clouds that are coming in. Quite dark. Warm in places, crisscross, crisscross to get the feeling of these fluffy finding to do all of this. You've got to really look for these colours. Look at these lovely colours we're getting now. This variety of lovely greys. Trying to get the feeling of perspective. We bring these clouds inwards like a clock face slightly here to draw the eye into the focal point here of the head of the goose and then round in these lovely curves. Now I'll take a bit more warmth into that colour to start getting these magentas and reds glowing a bit more into here. So let's start to use a bit more warmth. So I want to bring these shapes more into perspective now, so I'm making my marks more and more in a clock shape to try and lead the eye in more here. My strokes still going in this clockwise fashion. I want to start in these lovely cadmium orange hues down here, through into the clouds just gleaming. I'm just dragging this paint dryly, put it on a bit more purely in places like here, it wants to be built up, little strokes coming right up through this cloud. I'm suddenly going to start getting a glow into the sky, a really lovely glow. It just wisps in here, little strokes, just wisps of cloud coming down and through. a lot more subtle across here as the orange comes quite strongly through there. And we really start to see the effect of that sky, don't we? I'm going to make a very light cream now lemon yellow and a little touch of the white and the orange into it. And we're just going to start putting that up into the light areas here a bit more. As the clouds shine through here. And it's nice thicker paint you'll notice how, how thickly I'm using the paint now. I'm painting the fat now onto the lean. And we can start to bring that lemon yellow down into here also it's a lot cooler. Right, I'll leave it at that for the moment and come back to it later.
Okay, let's get on with our oil. When we were last working, we were working on the sky here. And I was building up these cadmium oranges. Cadmium yellow and cadmium orange light there, hue. Um, and we're still actually building those, those warm colours up. We're still building up these, these light creams and things. So let's take some white again and add it to the lemon yellow. Because we still need to continue with these beautiful light creams that were coming up through the sky here. Light creams that were happening there, almost into white in places. Light against it, right up to the goose. So, back to painting with light again. I like that feeling of. Um, that the colour I'm putting on actually symbolises, actually almost comes up as, as light when I'm painting it. I need to make those little strokes of the brush, little tickles of the brush as they come across. Learn them slightly in places. You don't want them to become a pattern repeated, that's a problem. Careful when you do brush marks that you don't make them the same. When you're painting things you don't start doing penny a yard and uh, Anything repeated makes a pattern, so let's be a little bit careful about that. So you're building up and building up, lighter and lighter and lighter. And this paint is almost layering up to about an eighth of an inch thick now. Getting quite heavy with it. Now, I'm going to come back slightly into that. A little bit of purple now. Just start playing with a bit of these pinks and purples coming into here. Some lovely colours. You really have to try and find them. Now, I want to come back to use a little bit of cobalt into that colour, that purple. Comes through the horizon here. Do a little bit more careful as I come through there. And it's almost a little bit of broken colour, it just comes through here. Slightly broken line, and a lovely, lovely blue glow going on, pinky blue glow going on back across here to this horizon. I said, Don't be afraid to go over things because we can come back later and touch them up. Okay, then now the ripples coming onto the sand here, and those colours coming through a little bit into here as well. Now that blue comes through in sheens across the water here as well. We can have verticals, keep the little bits of vertical marks going okay, just to give a feeling of reflection in water. And we'll come down into this a little bit more as well here. Now I want to go a little bit more pink again, so I'm going to take my magenta again, add some magenta to that same blue, but also go a little bit lighter with some white in it. Let's just find some of these slightly warmer pinks in here. Slightly more orange in a minute because I'll add some chrome yellow to this. But I do want to start getting feelings of reflections now, so I'm going to start using a few more vertical strokes amongst this as I'm putting it on to get the feeling of the wet sand. Get these pinks going on down to here, especially across this side here. It's quite a bit more of this warmer pink. Little vertical and horizontal strokes 
and people don't often realise just how much does go into them when, they, when they're up for sale. Because what the customer has to remember, which they don't seem to realise a lot of the time, is that we have the materials to pay for. On a painting like this you've got to be looking at 80 or so pound for a decent frame. And then 30 to 40 at least on materials, on paints and canvas at least. Um, and then the galleries want 30 to 40 percent, if not more. And even if the lowest rate is 30 percent, even at 30 percent, you know, if we're looking at a third of the of the amount just about then, if I need to make a hundred pounds on days and days of work on something like this, it's not an awful lot really compared to your garage asking 50 pounds an hour or so, or a solicitor hundreds of pounds an hour. When you think about it that way, an artist isn't asking that much. So, you no, know, I would have to ask about three hundred pounds for a painting like this frame to even make a hundred pounds on it. You can't tell me that that's asking an awful lot for our effort, is it really? It's a shame that people don't realise this and I think we just do it for fun, which we do, of course, it's for pleasure as well. Of course it is. Um, but, you know, uh, lucky, luckily enough we enjoy our work, many of us, that we do, but it is work. It is, you know, it's not just... Um, had to invest in all of this and the equipment and the time. And I had somebody recently very rudely say on, on YouTube, um, oh, well, I couldn't hear this and I couldn't hear that. And, and I said, well, you get what you pay for. I mean, you know, we put these films onto YouTube free. I normally sell my DVDs, which are of much higher quality, of course, um, because they're actually on a DVD then. Um, but if I'm selling those DVDs, I'm making at least something back on the hundreds and thousands of pounds I've spent. I mean, even the sound equipment I bought recently um, was over £500. And, you know, am I supposed to get that back again? There we are. Now you can see by just scumbling over here and doing some lot of vertical marks as well, I start to get uh, the feeling of water. Now I'm going to add a bit more blue to this. I'm going to start to take some of this cobalt blue now and just work into it a bit, just to give a bit more of the reflection of the blue sky. And look at the lovely effects we get as we play warm against cool with these colours. And I'm going to gradually work these darks up now over this light with slightly sharper edges as I come along because these little bits of dark want to be more defined. It's a bit darker there for that bird to be lighter against it so we'll make those darker marks now. I'm not painting the details of the birds in yet for that very reason that I want to be able to come back and uh, do those in far more detail later. So we're just starting to attack texture now. I'm going to have to go in there with a much finer brush to do the details on the waves. Let's make that darker colour at the moment, so a bit of purple. Into there, a bit of Prussian blue, and a little bit of the rose, just to really go back to the purpley bit again, and a wee touch because it's got to be quite dark of the burnt sienna. Let's see if we can get those lovely dark, rich dark colours back there. Maybe even a little touch of. Well, let's run into that. Yes, that's a nice colour. Now, a bit of turps into there. Get just the right colour. I'm right, not going to go darker yet. I haven't put the turps in. So a bit more brown, a bit more alizarin. That's a nicer, richer colour. My brush to one side. We'll take a very small filbert, pick up some of that colour on that. Let's just see if we can start to get these lines of, let's see now we've got the darker colour above there, these little lines of water coming through, they're very dark against the ripples of the light there. Some of this stuff has to be painted more carefully, can't do it all as an impression. But just make the marks about what you're doing, we're not trying to copy well, I've got the dark colour on there. We'll just go back into a bit more detail on those. 
Trouble is, I'm, because I'm having to paint for you, again, this is another point, you see. It's more difficult for me to paint for you, for you than it's on my own. I've got to try and reach around this canvas so that you can see what I'm doing. That doesn't help because it gives me, it actually distorts things and I'm painting in perspective. It's just occasionally I get a bit irritated when somebody complains about my trying to do good things and help you. Um, and is rude. I think I've got a right to as well. Use the brush to lift off that paint a bit there. Just go around a bit more with a bit of light there. And try and keep these, these forms, these birds, fairly simple. You can see I've just plonked them in to start with. Without too much detail, just to... Now, while I'm playing with detail, I'll take a little bit of that white. And we'll just catch their backsides with... If I can get the paint to work. A bit of colour, just under the tails there, and our waders start to appear just with a couple of marks. And of course, if we've got light there, then that has to shine down here as well. A bit of cream into them. So reflecting the sun there. We have another bird here, just at the end of this tail of this one. Just find its shape again. And just by leaving some of the dark behind, making the lights a bit stronger, you can actually find the bird. We just come back with those darks on that again as well. This one here, its head, little sun pipe or whatever it is. And again, I'm painting in perspective, so I've got to be careful. But a bit more warmth, just going on the back of the head here, and then to tidy it up a bit, the white. And back to our details again. But they're not just made up of single lines either. The ripples as they come forward here actually start to be made of a lot of ripples at a time like that. So this one here the same, we break it up into more than one ripple. The lighter colour there. Where the sun is, it's a bit warmer. It goes to a brown here. So you do look for the right marks. Make the marks about what you're doing. If the wave is a broken wave, then you make a broken wave. Don't just make the same marks all the time, all the way through. You can push the brush harder to make a wider mark. So as this comes through here, it's quite a strong thick wave, I shall push that brush just a little bit harder down to make a thicker wave. And make sure that it also follows through this side. There we go. And now we can really start to build up these details because we've got the background colours. I may use parts of the painting in a different one again. I mean, I've used the, the winter scene I'm going to do. I've got a couple of pheasants to do that I've actually used the same birds in an autumn scene. But they'll be painted quite differently. Start to find these birds that are just roughed in at first. In between. So sometimes I've got to go back here and paint bits out slightly to, to find the shape I want. There we go. Little detail on these birds. Just while I'm working on this, I might as well do some of this now.
I'm letting a little blue get into my paint here as well now. Tad a brown to my dark colour. And we'll just try and get the feeling of these feathers coming around with this bird. Not too much reflection on this one, don't want to overdo it, but maybe we'll just have a little bit. I'm going to come back to the sky a bit more now. I want to add some more pinks into that. I'll take some white again. And this time a little bit of Cadmium red. I don't want to get too pink. Back a little bit. Wee touch of cadmium yellow. Let's just take a look at some of the how that can work on there. Yes, I think I want to be a bit more. Bit pinker on that. Especially through here, so we can go quite a bit redder. And once we've got the pink going there, of course, it has to be reflecting down here as well. So we'll start to bring a little through these waves. into that so we're going to take some cadmium orange and we'll add those in strong more strongly here and that cadmium orange has to come down into there as well so a bit stronger now I could use a slightly stronger cadmium orange we need to try to pick up some of the warmth that's going on just into the edges here here. Play one colour against another so we play these warms against cools. Well the next job is to go back to the lighter colours that we're painting in the foreground. I'm going to take some white, some chrome yellow, to make a really beautiful very light yellow. We'll just come back into this a bit with that. First of all, just to get this lovely sunrise going here again. And then we want to sparkle that across here a little bit as well. We've got to bring that yellow just through here and start to try and get this feeling of the Sparkle across the ripples here, right through some of these areas, right up to the bird, and across some of these as well. Just gently dragging it across the surface of the to there. A bit stronger at the edges. So we get this effect of us looking into this sunrise. And I think we're just starting to win with the sky now. We're just starting to get it to look like a, a sunrise rather than just blobs of paint. Making the colours work one to another at last. Now, let's 
same yellow a little touch of the orange into it we've got to start on these more orange reflections which are quite strong as well just glazing across the surface just dragging across the surface just a little to get the oranges to work and rather than paint lines straight across I'm doing these little vertical strokes here to try and get the feeling of reflected light on the sand so I'm painting lines across but by using vertical strokes and the occasional horizontal one and try and get more of a oneness to it, try and get more of a unity. Let's look at the white in the in the ripples here as well, and the surf and the. Again, we don't want all horizontal strokes. We do want to try and find some of the vertical ones that are happening in here as well. I'm going to take some of that pink again, just make some of them a little pinker, a little lighter and pinker. Now that colour on my brush, I'll do a little bit on the bird as well, a bit warmer on the edge of the bird here, as it reflects the light. Even on, on these ones a bit as well. A bit more pink onto, onto some of these won't do any, any harm. A little touch of turps to get things going again. And let's have a bit more white and we'll gradually build up these much, much lighter areas here. cooler colours. I need some um, very very light but a warmer blue just to feel around here. And we'll take some cobalt which is a sort of a mid warm, a bit of white, to make it quite light and we'll just try and find some of these feathers around here which are cooler in the shade. To really get the feeling of the bird against the light. Mm -hmm. Onto a smaller brush. To just come back in with some of my deep Prussian blues and a little bit of ultramarine into the bird here. Yeah. I need to be a bit warmer, a bit darker, so I'll add some burnt uh, umber to it. I haven't used the burnt umber yet, we're going as dark as we can go then. So a bit darker with the burnt umber and the Prussian. Really start to get some of these darks showing out. It's a very light colour. Almost white there. I just want to come in and just get that beak shape just a little bit better there. Now, I think it's time to come down to some texturing, so I want to find a bit of sponge. Now I'm going to use a piece of sea sponge to try and get some texturing done for the um, little stones and pebbles. And I've mixed up I've mixed up a little Prussian and burnt sienna. And we don't overdo this, so it's an idea we get the, the sponge just right. Let's just see if we can get some onto the sponge and just 
start to make some textural marks onto here. Coming across the beach are much finer textures. Don't make a pattern. Keep changing the angle of the sponge so that you don't make a pattern, whatever you do. It's got to be very abstract. It's got to be mix a bit more. So a bit of terps, plenty of Prussian, plenty of bouts here, even a little bit of um, burnt umber to make a nice warm dark. And this is where we make our black. We don't make our black with with black. And slightly larger textures this time, all over, twisting it round. Don't worry if you go over the bird slightly, we can come back and touch that up. What is important is just important at the moment is just to get these these right. Just twist it round and don't be afraid. Come right over here if you need to where, where it's darker. You need plenty of paint for this. So you don't try to copy it exactly. There's no way you will. There's no point. I'm not trying to copy a photograph, but we're using the photograph if you remember to get the effects we want. Right up to the birds. Make some more. A bit warmer this time, so Prussian, a little bit of ultramarine and the brown. Plenty on my sponge, nice big dots right through here. Now, leaving the sponge, it's not going to dry quickly, so plenty of time to go back to our smaller brushes and go to a very small filbert now. Uh, mix a little more ultramarine with it and start to put in some of these larger pebbles, little lines of them that come right through to the birds. Repaint those birds in a moment as well. We want these darks against the lights to really make this stand out, so little strokes downwards um, to the edges here of this bit of reflection in light. home run now, we're just sort of starting to finish off and working towards the final strokes. Come back and touch things up if you need to. And now you can see how all of these colours that I was doing earlier underneath this as a basic for it, as the reflections, are now being hopefully being pulled together by this darker colour going on over the top. For instance, to make the bird stand out like I just have here. And suddenly we've got a beach that's come alive, full of pebbles and textures. Just let the flow of this sand, where the little rivulets are running down underneath the bird, just get the feel of those. And suddenly our painting appears to be almost done. I've got a little bit of tidying up to do here and there, but that's not too bad. What I'm going to do now is just take some more burnt sienna and put some of these warmer colours into the foreground to help lead the eye in and push these cooler pebbles back a little. And I think we're almost there, you know. We'll, we'll leave it till daylight tomorrow, but light's better, just take one last look at it and, and see what might be doing with a fresh eye. Just take those tapes in and edit them and we'll go from there. Right, well the last stages of this painting, a little white, not too much, just a little white, and some cerulean, a little touch of ultramarine. Take it down a bit more and we'll just see about reflecting some of the blue sky in amongst these areas by wiggling them in almost like snakes amongst it as they catch the light. Hmm. 
And again, if these colours are reflecting on the sand, they're going to be reflecting into the birds. I said about the beauty of these filberts is that now I can use the brush either thinly as I'm doing here, or I can use it flatter as I'm doing there. And look at the difference this blue has made to this painting and it's brought those purples out in between. I think we've uh, about reached the end of our painting here. Now I just want to go back on the birds, do a little more detail with them. Of course the paints with oil paints do last a bit long before they dry so I'm able to use some of the paint I've already mixed for the darks here. The thing I want to do is come back with a sponge now. And just do a little bit of sponge work. Take some white, some chrome yellow. A little bit of the light cadmium orange. And uh, I just want to Pick up on a little bit of texturing of the lighter colours on these little bits of stone here and there, just to get the idea of reflected light. Possibly we need a little bit of lighter colour or two. Just Coming into just get these cools right through here, a little bit more light blue through there. By playing these cools against the warms, we can obviously do the opposites and make one seem warmer and one seem cooler by doing just that. colours as well. And there we go, I think that'll about do it for this one. And we'll look at doing the snow one. Clean this up and do a signature. Mm -hmm.